이 피해 받고 나선 이런 모습이고 이렇게 뭐또 환자 대단한 기니 뭐 어떻게 하디 못해서 어디 이런 그런 사 살아갑니다. The World Food Program claims that it's delivering food to this area through the government distribution system. But it has no staff here to ensure that families like this get what they need. The government can't keep these people alive, and neither CARE nor any other agency are allowed to deliver food to them directly. They can't even beg. Their only option is to sit and wait for a starvation ration, which often doesn't come at all. This is the harvest that was to save Dong Sin, but floods and now a drought have taken their toll. If this is your best crop, it looks at what we've seen at the moment, yeah, the it's less than 50%. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the rest of the county must be... Yeah, really, the corn harvest has been devas totally devastated, really. Yeah. From a distance, it looks as healthy as any other crop. But like everything else here, you need to peel back the covers to see it. A town that looks okay on the surface until you start knocking on the doors. A child that you think is just thin until you feel their arms through their clothes. When did you receive your last ration? Last time I got it was on the 1st of the year. This man broke his back last year. He can no longer work, and now his daughter is starting to starve. And the families that we've seen with the uh, malnourished children, uh, and the ones that have lost their homes, or their relatives, or their husbands died, uh, or their, their situation is some, in some way more vulnerable, they're the ones that are suffering most. And so that's why you're seeing pockets of it. You're not seeing starvation everywhere. <laughs> There'll be no surplus to keep people like this alive through the winter. And it's likely that the situation is even worse further up the mountains, where there's even less arable land. They want to focus whatever resources they can get, sort of in an arc around Pyongyang. It would appear as if they've decided to let the uh, more remote areas go. If they've got a problem, they think they can control it by losing that part of their, their country, or not losing it, but letting that part go and focusing on the area they've got uh, control over. So that's why we suspect that things are much worse in, in, uh, in the more remote areas. Uh, but they won't let us up there. They won't let us up there maybe because they don't want to see how bad it is and if we see how bad it is that's when we'll want to work or because they, they just really want us to keep away from that and focus on, on, um, on the rice bowl areas. <laughs> In the face of natural disasters, the dear leader, Kim Jong-il, is committed to maintaining the world's last totally socialist system. But it's not just droughts and floods that have created the crisis here. North Korea has never had enough land to support an agrarian communist model, and since the collapse of its only patron, the Soviet Union, it's had no other economic inputs to make up the difference. It's a nation of edifice, spanned by huge highways but virtually no cars. Grand factories with nothing to make and nothing to sell. A capital city designed to look like a commercial hub but with no commerce at all. I'm confident that if we can sit down here and identify the need of uh, food security for nurseries and kindergartens, that if we're working together on this, we can probably do two or three hundred nurseries and kindergartens, maybe even more. But we're starting with a small number to build confidence for you. I mean, it's a learning, as you said, this is the first time that uh, the DPRK has asked for international assistance, but it's also the first time that international assistance has come to the DPRK. 
So everybody is... Williamson is having his final meeting with the deputy chairman of the government's relief committee. He's restating his position that there'll be no unmonitored national donations, but he will provide assistance for the areas he's seen. I've been to uh, Dongxin and to Huichon, and it's clear that there is a great need and uh, CARE will, will respond to that need uh, immediately. He'll supply greenhouses and winter clothing directly to the kindergartens. If it's successful, he'll expand the program. But it's not how the government wants to receive aid, nor where it wants it to go. It's been generally agreed that we focus on two, two provinces connected and probably in three or four counties uh, in those two provinces to begin with. And that's been Tongsin, Hichon. Tongsin, Hichon, and Kiwan, we get Nong Sar, Kiwan, and Kuya, 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 and 그 저쪽의 북쪽 북쪽 지역에서는 기본 농업을 물론 물론 농사를 하지만 거기서 생산하는 생산물이 극히 제한되어 있습니다. 네. 때문에 우리가 어 이쪽 서해안 농업에서 우리 서해안 지대에 집중해 가지고 서해안 지대나 쌀을 다 북쪽에다 공급해 준단 말이에요. In a more open society the government's logic might be believable. It's a position which is costing them, and more importantly, people who are starving, a fortune in potential aid. Williamson gets his program for the kids of Fuchon and Dong Sin. But for thousands of others starving, unknown and unseen, there's no one coming to help. Children will die because of the severe winter, and we definitely don't want that to happen if we can avoid it.